All right, I think everything has been set up. Hey, it's Joseph here. This is the last part of the video series that I have been planning all along. In my last two videos, I have done unboxing and sort of the first look videos for both Razer Blade Stealth 13 and then also Core X Chroma. So here are two devices put together and I am about to introduce this unique workflow that will benefit AEC industry in my opinion. Because we live in this day and age, there's been a big shift in the way we work. You can often see a lot of people working from home from a laptop that has been issued from their companies. And unfortunately, this means that the workstation that are purpose-built and powerful are left at the office and you may end up with some sort of laptop that may or may not meet your performance requirement. But we are still expected to do same amount of complex tasks that we used to do at the office. And all of these day-to-day -day AEC industry tasks that we typically do, everything from graphic design, drawings, 3D modeling, rendering, and even VR, they all leverage the performance out of your graphic cards. So if you're one of those people who have been noticing a lot of sluggishness of your machine due to these uh, graphic intensive tasks that you are throwing at your machine, I guess I'm talking to you. This eGPU, the external GPU is made for the gaming industry so it can perform the best in terms of graphic fidelity so that it looks as real as possible. But there's actually continued theme here. Both real-time rendering and VR are made for gaming initially, but yet we are starting to utilize those technology in architecture. So perhaps this is another one that's gonna make its way into our professional industry. By the way, the laptop that I'll be using today is Blade Stealth 13 from Razer and it has a solid battery life and performance and it is light and portable as well so it wouldn't be much of a problem carrying this around in doing your tasks. However, it does not have a GPU for you to do graphic intensive tasks such as Enscape rendering. If you attempt to launch Enscape out of this laptop, you're going to get an error message saying that your machine's performance does not meet Enscape's requirement. And even if your end goal is not to render your 3D model, Enscape has been a great tool for just designing in general as you can visually validate your BIM models and the 3D designs that you have been putting inside of your model. And I personally have been using Enscape in both Revit and SketchUp to aid in modeling, live presentation and renders and even VRs as well. So I am very glad Enscape was able to sponsor this video to showcase what is possible with this contraption. Because this laptop supports Thunderbolt 3 right here, you can just connect this single cable onto this port right here. And as soon as you connect this single port here, it is going to start charging your laptop and connect to all the peripherals that has been connected to this unit, such as keyboard, mouse, and the big monitor that I have here. Let me actually show that to you. So this is actually my setup right here. You can see that the laptop has been connected to here via this single cable here. And then that unit is also powering this monitor here. So everything now has been connected and all you need is a single cable right here. So now I can go ahead and run one of the sample Revit file that Enscape provides to you. And then I can simply go ahead and click on Enscape, start. And you will notice that there is no longer the error message that we were seeing. And then we are in. As soon as it shows up, I have absolutely no problem navigating this around. I can actually double click right here. And then this is the same model that I've been kind of using as an example. And everything shows up just fine. And you certainly cannot expect your machine to do such thing if it was without graphics card. There's no error message, no fiddling with drivers, no sluggishness. It just works. Obviously, Razer wants you to pair up their devices together for this sort of workflow. But I must tell you that I have tried it on other machines too with the Thunderbolt 3 port 
and it works just as the same. And as I have stated earlier, the single port is letting you have all the graphics card performance peripheral devices to be connected in power to the laptop as well. This just becomes oversized docking station for your ultra portable laptops that you normally carry around or have at home. So the scenario is you can just disconnect this cable and then actually start walking around and work elsewhere with your laptop. You can actually do all the modeling at your dining table or the porch if you would like. And actually the weather here has been just great. It's been sort of the fall weather where you can sit outside and enjoy the sun and the wind that is blowing. And for the models like this, you can see I already have asset library being utilized from the Enscape. And you can still use Enscape asset library even without good graphics card. So in this case, I can go to vegetation. And once these sort of vegetation shows up, I can just click on them and then just plunk them down into my model and basically do all the necessary modeling. And because SketchUp and Revit itself does not require as heavy graphics card performance, so you can still carry on doing a lot of modeling such as placing these Enscape assets into your model. And then you can just simply come back to your desk when it is time for your client presentation. And then you can connect your cable and load the model that you have been working on and then simply click on start Enscape. And since I am now connected to my large screen to utilize the extra screen real estate, I can move my rendering view onto that screen instead. But for the screen recording purposes, I'm just gonna leave this screen on here and then I can just share this specific screen with my client that I'm gonna be meeting with on either Zoom or Teams, whatever the video conference software that you use. So I can discuss about my project here today and all the stuff that I have been working on will be showing up on this screen and then we can just continue to discuss. And on the other side of the screen, the big screen that I'll be using, I can have the SketchUp side shown on here so that I can just go ahead and talk about, hey, what about the four bushes here? Would you like it here or would you like more? Would you like some more on the roadway like so? And as you share your screen with your client, you can talk about the awesome design that you have been working on with great realism. You can actually walk them through the model and talk about the designs. And then I can actually come out here and then show the facade and yet just change the material. Let's say I want to apply this material here. I can go ahead and just change the material and everything shows up like that. I don't need to tell you the rest, do I? So actually, let's take this further. Let's say either you or your client is needing to see all of this in VR to literally walk inside of the model. Then I'm gonna have to grab my VR. So here is the VR headset with all the controllers. And then I just need this single cable. Okay, I'm just gonna connect this single cable onto the laptop. And then you can see how the headset is now active. And then I can go to the Enscape side and then just activate the VR headset. And as soon as I do that, you'll be able to see what is going on on my screen. Let's just maximize that screen so that you guys could see it as well. So there you go. I can just use this set to just walk through this model here. I can simply walk around on this tiny space that I have here. Move around if I need to. Look around. I can also control different things here. And then I can go to this view right here. There you go. Or outside, jump so that I'm over here. So both of the VR headset and the presentation screen is going to be very smooth without any sort of sluggishness 
that you might experience with your laptops. And overall, you're gonna have very smooth VR experience as this is able to push a lot of performance for you that is necessary for VR process. And for some of you who has tried the VR presentation on your laptop, there's no fan that is just really taking off. I do hear the unit a little bit, but it is not bothersome. It is still quiet and it is all well managed. And if you have tried any of these tasks without a good dedicated graphics card inside of your laptop, then you will know how slow or downright impossible to run these sort of tasks out of your laptop. So all in all, all of this was to say with this external GPU unit, you can convert your ultra portable laptops that you have into a powerful workstations. Okay, so all of that sounds great, but what about the cost aspect of all of this setup? Mid-October of 2020, I can find Core X Chroma at about 399 US dollars. If you're aiming for middle of the road performance, then you can spend about three to four hundred dollars into this unit for the graphics card that you are going to put in. And I am referencing to GTX 1080, which is an old card, but was able to handle all of these tests without any problem at all. So that is roughly $800 extra for this graphics card unit. For larger laptops such as 15 inch and 17 inch laptops, you can pay extra $800 and you can probably get the top tier graphics card for your unit. But for 13 inch Ultrabooks, you're simply not going to find any top tier cards inside of your machine because it's just physically not possible or it is gonna produce too much heat or battery consumption to have those cards inside of your machine. So with that, you can actually leave that 800 on the table, pun intended, and then just carry around the rest with your light backpack. And also, if you're willing to spend a bit more, there's a lot more options available to go inside of this graphics card unit because you can fit it out with top tier cards if you would like to, and it will work exactly the same. And if the graphics card needed upgraded later on, then you can just upgrade later on as well, rather than swapping out your laptop and shelling out more money. And if you actually look at all of this from the perspective view of USB-C docking station, some of those Thunderbolt 3 docking station that I found online are two to three hundred dollars. And this is not that expensive compared to just a docking station if you just take out the graphics card. So if you were to just put in another graphics card, then you're able to connect Ethernet cable, all of those USB-A ports, peripherals, keyboard, mouse, whatever that you have, and so many more monitors that you can just plug in. For the sake of testing, I have connected all three of my monitors and peripherals onto this unit and just single port onto the laptop. It just worked flawlessly. So in this case, this is more like Thunderbolt docking station that is going to boost your performance that is upgradable. And with that, I'm sure there's a lot of questions and thoughts that are out in the air. So if you have any of those, please leave comment down below. I'll be happy to discuss. And all of these products links that I have shown in this video are included in the description. If you use those affiliated links, then it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it helps to support this channel. And I sincerely appreciate all of you who have purchased through those links. And I also thank Enscape for sponsoring to make this video possible. It is a great visualization tool for multiple CAD softwares. So do check out their website for a free 14 day trial. And if you have enjoyed this content, please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to continue watching these type of videos. Thank you so much for watching as always. I'll see you next time. Bye.